God has gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of the trumpet. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, for 40 days we have been celebrating with joyful hearts the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, his bursting from the tomb and his defeat of the power of sin and death. He appeared to his disciples many times and told them about the kingdom of God. Today we recall how he left this earth and returned to his Father, ascending into heaven to take his throne over all dominions and powers, trusting in his reign over all creation and submitting to his kingly yet loving rule, let us hear the story of his parting. A reading from Acts chapter 1. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he would said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, Suddenly, two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! Seeing we have a great high priest who has passed through the heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us offer him the praise worthy of his name.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that as we believe your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to have ascended into the heavens, so we in heart and mind may also ascend and with him continually dwell, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead and on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised, so stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven, and they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple, blessing God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I've heard a good many sermons in my time but with all due respect to my fellow Anglican clergy, there aren't actually that many I can remember. There's one notable exception, and that was Robert Runcie's last sermon as Archbishop of Canterbury in 1991. And what has lived with me ever since was his observation that the great enemy of faith is not lack of belief, but fear. Now this came as a bit of a shock to me at the time, but something that immediately and intuitively struck me as being true, and I've been mulling it ever since, never more so than during this period of lockdown. This has been, after all, a great period of fear, and for many, especially the elderly and lonely, those with serious health conditions, and those fearing for their jobs and businesses, it remains exactly that. 
what's been striking for me is how much this fear has been in evidence. Every day since the lockdown began, I've gone for a walk or a run on Hampstead Heath. And it's not an exaggeration to say that particularly when I've been out running, some people have viewed my approach as some kind of threat. The fear has been etched on their faces. In some cases, they've issued instructions for me to keep my distance in pretty sharp terms. Now, it's really not for me to judge whether their evident fear was in any way rational or justified. But what I can say for sure is that my reaction was variously sadness, dismay, and in one case, resentment. By contrast, there were many I encountered who would smile and nod, nod acknowledgement as we observed social distance. And that cheered me and lifted my spirits no end as I reciprocated their greeting. This experience has underlined for me the truth of Archbishop Runce's insight. Fear pinches and cramps us. It hinders our creativity and generosity and cuts us off from each other as it forces us inwards on ourselves. It is as such the great enemy of the abundant life that Jesus wants us to have. And this is a truth we do well to recall on this day of all days, when Jesus ascended to his Father that we might be, as the Gospel told us this evening, clothed with power from on high. As the Archbishop argued in his sermon, the distinguishing characteristic of those who have faith is their belief that we have access to a power external to ourselves in the Holy Spirit. And that makes all the difference. The Holy Spirit is our great defence against fear. Well, that's all very well, but how, you may ask. And here it seems to me that the lockdown offers a valuable lesson. Now, I realise speak, I'm speaking personally here, but I wonder if what I'm about to say resonates with you. To begin with, the lockdown seemed to me to be a gross inconvenience, upsetting many well-laid plans and not a few hopes. But I slowly come to appreciate the lack of busyness even to the extent of wondering why I'd filled my life with activities that really, on reflection, don't seem to be that necessary. And I know from speaking to some of you that you've had similar experiences. But what's really inter interesting to me is how really important and positive this enforced apparent idleness has been. There's been time to notice and drink in this glorious spring, the light, the warmth, the birdsong. There has been time to think and reflect on all manner of things without, in the poet Andrew Marvell's wonderful phrase, time's winged chariot hurrying near. There's been time for silence, for prayer and meditation. In the midst of all this, I was reminded of something that Moses said to the frightened Israelites in Exodus as they looked on the might of Pharaoh's army raged against them. He said, the Lord will fight for you, and you have only to keep still. Stillness. That's what the lockdown has made possible. And this has caused me to wonder whether in, in, whether in all our frenetic busyness we aren't crowding out the Holy Spirit in our lives. That in our fevered doing and striving we're overlooking this external power that is available to us, if only we will take time to be still. Now I realise that this may seem like a tall order for many of us who are facing difficult challenges, but this is not for a moment a get, of jail, get out of jail card that I'm talking about. It's not about being suddenly zapped by the Holy Spirit such that our fears magically disappear. Rather it's about making ourselves available to the Holy Spirit through stillness and simple practices such as actively noticing the present moment, calm reflection, prayer and meditation. So that we come to see our fears as not necessarily banished, but contained by our faith and put in the kind of perspective that enables us to discern God's way ahead for us. We will all have our own personal experiences of the lockdown for good and ill. 
but I would encourage everyone to question whether, buried in this retreat from what we have come to regard as normality, there isn't an invitation to slow down so that we might gradually enlarge that space within us wherein the Holy Spirit can come and dwell. Amen. Let us join our prayers with those of our Saviour Christ, seeking the Father's blessing and the gift of the Spirit. Jesus Christ, great High Priest, living forever to intercede for us, pray for the Church, your broken body in the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, King of righteousness, enthroned at the right hand of the majesty on high, pray for the world and make it subject to your gentle rule. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, Son of Man, drawing humanity into the life of God, pray for your brothers and sisters in need, distress or sorrow. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, pioneer of salvation, bringing us to glory through your death and resurrection, surround with your saints and angels, those who have died, trusting your promises. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, Lord over all things, ascend far from the heavens and filling the universe, pray for us who receive the gifts you give for work in your service. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, keep the church in the unity of the spirit and in the bond of peace and bring the whole created order to worship at your feet, for you are alive and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Jesus says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. If you love me, rejoice because I am going to the Father, alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, the King of glory. Born of a woman, he came to the rescue of our human race. Dying for us, he trampled death and conquered sin. By the glory of his resurrection, he opened the way to life eternal, and by his ascension gave us the sure hope that where he is, we may also be. Therefore, the universe resounds with Easter joy, and with choirs of angels, we sing forever to your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. looking for the coming of his kingdom. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord, we died with you on the cross. Now we are raised to new life. We were buried in your tomb. Now we share in your resurrection. Live in us that we may live in you. I heard the voice of a great multitude crying, Alleluia! The Lord our God has entered into his kingdom. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Alleluia!
Let us pray. God our Father, you have raised our humanity in Christ and have fed us with the bread of heaven. Mercifully grant that nourished with such spiritual blessings, we may set our hearts in the heavenly places through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then the disciples returned to Jerusalem from the Mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. They were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. As we wait in silence, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we listen to your word, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we worship you in majesty, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your refreshing, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your renewing, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your equipping, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your empowering, make us ready for your coming spirit. God the Father, who has given to his Son the name above every name, strengthen you to proclaim Christ Jesus as Lord. Amen. God the Son, who is our great High Priest, passed into the heavens, plead for you at the right hand of the Father. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who pours out abundant gifts upon the Church, make you faithful servants of Christ our King. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Waiting expectantly for the promised Holy Spirit, go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.